Hello friends, this video on metal and non-metal part 17 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Before watching this video, please make sure that you have watched part 1 to part 16. Now let's start with a new topic called corrosion. What is corrosion? So when the iron is exposed to a moist air for a long time, it gets this brown flaky substance, right? This guy. This guy is called rust. And this stuff is called corrosion. So what happens in corrosion? If you see iron, it reacts with oxygen. It gives Fe 2 or 3. Correct? You can balance this. So this becomes 2 Fe and 3 by 2. Yeah. This is the Fe 2 or 3 is the reaction. Correct. So this is nothing but my corrosion reaction. This guy is rust actually. This guy is rust. And this is a very painful thing because a lot of time we see we buy something and it gets corroded and it's waste. The strength of this article is gone, it's weak. You can't use it anymore. It looks dirty. It's look dingy actually. So this is something which you don't want, right? This is something which is a unwanted thing and we always want to avoid corrosion. So let's see what we can do on that. So what is required for corrosion? So we know that both air and water is required for the corrosion. Correct. So to prove this, what we can do is we can take three test tubes. In this test tube, we have put this nail and this is this nail is exposed to both air plus water. Right? Because there's a air, there's a water. This guy is put in distilled water and you have put this oil layer so that there is no air that uh, comes to this uh, water or comes to this uh, nail. So that here we have water but no air. Right? Here in this case we have put calcium chloride and this is dehydrating agent actually. No, it will remove the water, it will absorb all the moisture actually. So here we have air but no water. Why? Right? Because all the moisture in the air is absorbed by this guy, dehydrated, dehydrating agent actually. Okay. So what we'll see that, we'll keep this for two or three days, we'll see that this guy got rusted. This guy got rusted. This guy got no rust. This is also no rust. So in this case, we provided water, but still there was no rust. In this case, we provided air, but there was no rust. In this case, we gave air and water both and it rusted. Thus, we conclude that both air and water are required for this corrosion. This is an experiment you can do in your home also. You can have three test tubes, put this in water. Right, and it will have this air also. So this has air, water, both. Put this in water, put the oil thing the, so that there is no extra air inside that. This has only water. Put in, put this some calcium chloride you can get from lab and put this in the test tube, close all. And after one week or something, you'll find that this gets corroded and this are all fine. So that's the message we have got and the key we have got that both air and water is required from for corrosion. So we can stop one of these, we can stop corrosion, right? So we can stop corrosion by painting, oiling, greasing, galvanizing, chrome plating, anodizing, making a lot. So painting we know with painting, uh, the layer of paint and uh, water and air both are avoided. So there is no rusting. In oiling also, we have a layer of oil and there is a uh, air avoided, right? So you can avoid this. Greasing also does the same thing, right? So you can avoid this water and air. These are all things we know. Galvanizing is something which is new to us. We'll learn this. Chrome plating is uh, plating a layer of chrome. Anodizing is also new to us. Making alloy is also new to us. So we learn all these actually, right? What is galvanizing, chrome plating, anodizing, making alloy, and how these things help in preventing corrosion. So first thing is galvanization. Galvanization is the method of protecting steel on iron from rusting by coating them with a thin layer of zinc. And I'll tell you, it's a very critical thing. Why we layer, uh, we coat with the layer of zinc? Why don't we do with the paint? We can do, we can coat anything with the paint also. But something like utensils, if you coat with paint, the moment you heat it for cooking something, the paint will burn, glow off. So we can't do. We can't coat with paint in such scenarios, right? So we have to use something else. So in that case, we use this zinc, and this process is called galvanization. 
correct so and zinc here acts as a anode so that it cathodically protects steel that means even if a steel is scratched or broken the zinc part is scratched or broken it will still prevent the zinc will still prevent because zinc will act as anode it will still prevent let's explain this why so the method of galvanization is like this we have two methods one is hot tip galvanization the other is electro plating see i'll tell you how this sacrificial thing works so if you see fe when it reacts with oxygen becomes fe2o3 so gradually what is happening is fe is becoming positive right so iron is losing electron for corrosion correct and when it is losing electron it is mixing with oxygen so what this guy is doing zinc is acting as anode anode is something which takes electron right so whatever extra electron it has given this this zinc will take it zinc will take it and it won't allow iron to get rusted correct because anode takes electron so zinc will take electron and it won't allow iron to rust correct see iron has a tendency to lose electron so iron will lose electron anyway right now if this electron is taken by oxygen it rust if this guy is taken by zinc it won't rust so that is happening is so the moment this extra electron which iron has lose is taken by oxygen there is a rusting that gets fe2o3 but the extra electron whenever it comes zinc takes it then oxygen won't be able to take it right if zinc takes it then that means fe2o3 is not formed and that's how it prevents rusting hope you understand this the sacrifice uh, sacrificial anode you can say where zinc will take the extra electron zinc will not allow oxygen to take the extra electron correct now let's go and do uh, understand this two method hot dip galvanizing and electroplating so in hot dip galvanizing what we do is we have this zinc uh, molten zinc in this we dip aluminum because hot dip galvanizing in electroplating what we do we have this uh, i think we have discussed electroplating thing where we have this uh, aluminum here and where we have this uh, zinc thing here right we have this zinc thing here so it goes here gradually so in this case this is aluminum and this may be the cathode actually and we have some anode and you put some battery in this right so what happened is uh, this has some zinc solution actually it's a process zinc ion in zinc sulfate form zinc sulfate it, it 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 this guy has a negative electrons it gets attracted and it forms a layer here so if you see this guy gets a zinc layer correct hope you understand this you have this beaker in this you have molten zinc sulfate solution and then you pass the electricity right and this uh, uh, you get electrons here electrons and you have this zinc ions here in zinc ion sulfate ions here this zinc ion is attracted towards this electron and this it gets uh, in this it gets a uh, layer of this the zinc ion will get this electron and will become zinc and will get deposited here correct now let's see the third process called alloying alloy is a homogeneous mixture of two or more metals or a metal or a non metal please note alloy is a homogeneous mixture of two or more metal or a met or a, a metal and non metal so you can have a metal non metal combination or you can have n number of metals combination also like you have metal plus metal combination this way or metal plus non metal combination so this is alloy right it is prepared generally by 
first melting the primary metal and then dissolving other metals in a different proportion and then cool down for example uh, i'll take some examples here so, so for example iron is very soft right and uh, it, it stretches easily when it's hot but when this guy is mixed with this guy 0.5 percent or 0.05 percent of carbon it becomes very hard and strong and that is what we call alloying so you have this you take 99.995 percent of iron and 0.05 percent of carbon you mix it in the molten state cool down this becomes very hard and alloying is a very good method of improving the property of metal there is there has to be a reason why we are doing alloying right so it improves the property of the metal for example in this case iron was a little soft element when hot then what we have done is we have put only 0.05 percent of carbon and it has become very hard and strong another example is when iron is mixed with nickel and cadmium it becomes stainless steel it doesn't rust the rusting problem is solved just by adding nickel and chromium in a small quantity right so that's what the alloying is the beauty of alloy is you add a metal the bigger portion has to be this big metal and then small add small small portion of some other metals in the molten state right everything is molten and then you cool it down the cool down metal you get is alloy and it has very good properties for example steel steel has iron and small amount nickel and chromium with this there is no rust the rusting problem is solved iron is soft you add 0.05 percent carbon it's very very hard and strong that's what the beauty of alloy is you add small amount of other metals or non-metals to it and the property change one more example can be this pure gold so if you see gold is 24 karat and that's very soft you can't even make ornaments out of that if you make you can break it with the hand also so what we'll do is they add generally add copper or silver to it and make it 22 karat that is they're adding impurities to it to make it 22 karat and then the gold is strong the gold is strong and you can make ornaments correct so we have a new term called amalgam what is amalgam so if an alloy has mercury in it it is called amalgam so if you put even one person of mercury that alloy is called amalgam so just a term we should know so i just have put this now conductivity of alloy is generally less than pure metal this please note it is generally less than pure metal correct so if we talk about conductivity and melting point both conductivity and melting point both of an alloy is less than pure metal for example if you see the brass brass is an alloy of copper and zinc bronze bronze is an alloy of copper and tin they are not so good conductor but copper is a good conductor so in copper you add small amount of zinc it becomes brass copper you add small amount of tin it becomes bronze they are not very good conductor of electricity as compared to copper also we talk about the melting point if you see shoulders as the alloy of lead and tin it has a very low melting point and that's why you use for soldering right it, 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 it melts easily it has very low melting point as compared to uh, lead and tin so that's why the alloy generally has low melting point and it has low conductivity as compared to the pure metals. Thank you. Visit examfear.com to watch free educational videos, try free online tests, get the best quality study materials, study from the best tutors and mentors and much more. Thanks once again.